Hello, this is Mario from Odeon. In this video, we will show you Odeon's Genetic Material Optimizer, available in Editions Auditorium and Combined. The Genetic Material Optimizer automatically tunes your model in terms of absorption to get a closer match to a set of desired results. This is especially useful in two scenarios. The first is when you are planning to acoustically treat a room and you first need the model to match the real room. In this case, you would load measured data, and Odeon will optimize the model to obtain simulated results close to the measured ones. The second scenario is when designing a room where some parameters should be within a certain target range. This could be for a new room, but it could also be for the second stage of designing acoustical treatment after matching to the real room. In both scenarios, best results are obtained when you have confidence in most of the materials in the model and you only have a few materials with uncertain absorption coefficients. The optimization is done with a type of algorithm called a genetic algorithm. This uses a process similar to genetic evolution in order to take a starting set of input parameters, suggest new input parameter values within defined ranges, derive results, and suggest even further input parameter values around the best results. This is an iterative process, which gradually finds better results. You can read more about the algorithm itself in Chapter 13 of our User Manual. In Odeon, this adjusts the absorption coefficients of your materials, gradually getting a closer match between your simulated results and your desired results. In your Odeon model, you should have a starting point for your absorption coefficients. So, even the uncertain materials should have some absorption coefficients, as close to reality as possible. Then, you will need to define jobs. If you wish to match the model to a real room, then the jobs should closely match the measurement setup. First, the jobs should have the same source and receiver positions as your measurements. And the sources should have power and directivity data as close as possible to the real sources. Next, you should load the reference data to the corresponding jobs. If you have target ranges for parameters, we will talk about that a bit later in the video. If you have a set of measurements to match to a real room, there are two ways to load the data, depending on whether you have the impulse response WAPE files or you have stored the parameter values themselves. Remember that you can make impulse response measurements with Odeon's measurement system, which we explain in another video. If you have the impulse response WAPE files, you will first click on Load Impulse Response. You can select and open many impulse responses at once. Next, open the context-sensitive menu up here. And go to Add Measured Parameters to Multipoint Job and Close. Select the job number, the receiver, and click OK. You will need to repeat this for every receiver position, but if your file name ends with the letter R and a number, Odeon will automatically identify the receiver point. You will mainly have to double check the job and correct it if necessary. We would recommend to take a look at the impulse responses while you're doing this to make sure that they look right and that the onset time is properly set. Notice that you can also use the Control Insert shortcut to add the parameters and close. If you instead have the parameter values, you will first need to format the data. We would recommend a spreadsheet software such as Excel. For each receiver position, you should have the word receiver, followed by the receiver number in the next cell. Make sure that the receivers in the measured data and the ones in the model have matching numbers. Beneath that, you will have rows for different parameters. The first column will specify the parameter. After that, you will have 8 columns, where you will enter your data for each octave band. 
Whether you use a dot or a comma as a decimal separator will depend on your computer's language settings. If you don't have the data at specific octave bands, you may enter a dash. For wideband parameters, simply enter the number in the second column. You don't strictly need the parameters shown here. Simply enter the parameters you managed to measure and wish to use. Next, select the job, then go to the multipoint response. You can do this even if you haven't calculated the response. Here, go to the Simulated versus Measured and Targets tab. Then, open the Context Sensitive menu. And go into Open Edit Measured Data File. In this window, simply copy and paste your data from the spreadsheet. Then, save the data and close the window. Back in the multipoint response, I will again go to the context sensitive menu and select Reload Target Measured Data. You will see that the simulated and measured data don't match well. That's because I have deliberately entered some bad coefficients, which we will fix through the optimizer. If you instead wish to optimize for target ranges in a new design, then you will instead go to Open Edit Target Data File. You can define minimum and maximum values for each parameter. Here, it is easier to enter the data directly, though you may still copy from a spreadsheet if you prefer. Again, each value is for each octave band. You can separate values with any number of spaces or tabs and enter a dash where you don't need values. Remember to add the measured or target data to all jobs you wish to use. Next, we should select which parameters to use as reference for the optimization. It is difficult to optimize for many parameters at once, so it is better to choose only a few meaningful ones. For that, we will go into the Room Acoustic Parameter list. Then, we click on Expand Tables. The parameters here at the top are the frequency-dependent parameters, while down here you will find the wideband parameters. For either type, you can disable parameters by unticking the checkbox under the visible column. We would recommend to use some 5 or 6 parameters, including a few ones that are position dependent. A good combination would be EDT, T20, T30, C50, C80, and Center Time. So I will only leave those enabled. The optimization should be done with a high degree of accuracy, so we would recommend you to increase the number of late rays in the room setup. You could select the precision setting and maybe take half the number of late rays, which is still good accuracy. We would recommend to perform the optimization on a backup of your model. You can create a copy by going to File, Copy Files. Now, we will go to the Genetic Material Optimizer by clicking here. Here, we will select which jobs to use for the optimization. Only jobs with loaded, measured or target data will appear here. 
Most of the settings here are too advanced, so we will not adjust them. However, if you have entered target curves, you can select whether to use the measured or target data as reference. If you have not entered target curves, this option will not appear, and Odeon will use measured data by default. Down here, we have the materials in your model, with their absorption coefficients. We can configure this search range percentage, which is the maximum degree of variation that Odeon will introduce around the original coefficients. For example, I will select this material. With the current setting, Odeon will look for absorption coefficients between the red and blue lines for this material. As we increase the search range, this range expands. You can view the full vertical scale by disabling the auto scale. If we set the range to 100%, you can see that any absorption coefficient will be allowed. However, we don't recommend extremely high search values, even for uncertain materials. This could result in some nonsensical absorption curves, such as the absorption of mineral wool on the floor, or the absorption of carpet on the ceiling. So, the absorption curve should be confined to a generous range which will still be reasonable. For uncertain materials, we would recommend a search range between 70 and 90. And for known materials, you can use a search range of 50 or slightly lower. Even if the coefficients are reliable, it's good to have some flexibility for the search. You should only use 100 in very extreme cases where you simply have no idea what the material could be. And then, you should also make sure to only vary that material and set the rest to low search values, somewhere between 0 and 20. In this case, I will enter 85 for these two materials. For the rest of the materials, we can leave the default search range of 50. Down here, you can double check which parameters will be used for the optimization. We can now perform the calculation. To do that, we click on this Calculate button. This curve at the bottom will show the error at each iteration, as a function of generations and individuals. An individual is each full set of absorption coefficients, and each new generation is a set of individuals derived from the best previous individuals. The error is shown in just noticeable differences, and it is the average error across all calculated parameters. You can also change the octave band at the right side. For all materials, you can now distinguish between the initial coefficients, the best optimization so far, and the current iteration. For the currently selected material, you will also see the initial, optimized, and current in the curves. At the top of the window, you will see the best fitting compared to the original fitting. So, the green bars describe the average J and D using the best coefficients Odeon has found so far. Finally, we have the time that has passed since the last error decrease for each octave band. If these bars are very high, it means quite some time has passed since better coefficients were found, which means that it has become difficult to further optimize. This calculation will never actually end, instead continuously running more iterations. You may stop it when the average error has gone low enough for the best fitting, or when it has been a long time since new optimal coefficients were found. You can stop the calculation by simply closing the window. First, confirm to cancel the ray tracing. Then accept to update the materials. Keep in mind that this will not create new materials, but rather it will edit the coefficients of your current materials. The coefficients will be adjusted directly in the surface list, for example, here we can see that material 51 in the surfaces has the new coefficients, while material 51 in the library keeps its original coefficients. You may want to update the coefficients in the library, but make sure whether you are currently in the local room library, 
or the global library. Upon rerunning the job, we can see that the simulated results are much closer to the measured results. So, let's summarize the full procedure. If working on a real room, first perform measurements in the room. Create an Odeon model with a starting set of reasonable absorption coefficients. Create multipoint jobs. If working on a real room, the jobs should match the measurement setup. Load the reference data for the optimization. This can be the impulse responses for the measured room, data for measured parameters, or target ranges of parameters. Select the parameters to use in the optimization. Adjust the calculation accuracy. Create a backup of your model. Select whether to use measured or target data. Increase the search range for uncertain materials. Start the calculation. Stop the calculation when the error is low enough or no new coefficients are being found. With that, we conclude this tutorial, and we hope you have found it useful. Good luck!